Hello and welcome to this TRT World special on Turkey's military operation in northern Syria. I'm Jamie Owen in Istanbul and over the next half hour we'll bring you the latest developments, world reaction to the conflict as well as analysis from our correspondents in the field. Turkey's Operation Olive Branch in northern Syria has entered its second week, so let's take a closer look at where things stand now. Since the offensive began last week, at least 20 soldiers have been killed. Five were members of the Turkish army. Turkey's military, along with the Free Syrian Army, say they've killed 484 YPG and Daesh terrorists and destroyed at least 382 YPG targets. Turkey's foreign minister has called on the U.S. to withdraw its troops from Syria's Manbij region as the Turkish army expands Operation Olive Branch. The U.S. should cut all ties with the terror group. They have to make them drop their weapons completely. They should take back the weapons they gave. They should immediately retreat from Manbij. The U.S. is a country that says they combat terrorism, while admitting that the YPG is no different from the PKK. They should definitely disassociate themselves and take steps to build the trust that has been lost. Uh, Turkey knows where our forces are uh, in Manbij and, you know, and what they are doing there and why they are there uh, to prevent any kind of escalation between the groups that are in that area. Manbij, as a result, that used to be held by ISIS, is now uh, thriving and there are, uh, it is getting back to life and there are projects and stabilization efforts uh, that uh, are a model for other areas that have been held by ISIS in the past. So we will continue to operate there uh, until told to do otherwise uh, for the same reasons that we've been doing it for more than a year now. Well, let's talk to Hassan Abdullah, who's following the story from Ankara, and Courtney Keeley on the ground for us in Hatay. Let's begin with Hassan in Ankara. Uh, the president has spoken about uh, the new fronts. Let's just talk about the diplomatic challenges around expanding this operation. Jamie, Turkey has been talking to all its allies and the message from Ankara has been that for Turkey it's important that the allies are taken into confidence and that, and that there is close coordination between Turkey and its allies. But what officials in Ankara are saying is that despite the efforts from Turkey, some of its allies, particularly the United States, seems not to have taken Turkey's security concerns into account. And now Turkey is left with no option but to take those steps that are essential to ensure its uh, national security and also the uh, territorial integrity of Syria. Now, for example, some officials here in Ankara have said that uh, we have been hearing words but no action. And earlier, Turkey's Deputy Prime Minister Bekir Bozda has said that uh, it's, all, it's been all talk and no action. And that in the case of Manbij, for example, if the United States fails to live up to its commitment, which, according to Turkish officials, the U.S. has been doing so far, then Turkey will have no option but to take action and take, uh, take action against uh, terrorist groups in the northern belt of Syria in what uh, Turkey calls the terror corridor. And uh, Bekir Bozda has said earlier that Turkey will be taking action to the east of uh, Euphrates River as well. We're going to talk more about the U.S. position later in this program, but just for a moment, I want to talk to you about the Turkey-Russia position and the phone conversations that have been taking place between Turkey and Russia. Well, the foreign ministers of the two countries uh, have uh, discussed a host of issues. They've primarily talked about the Afrin operation, and uh, Turkey has been careful to cl coordinate closely with Russia to ensure that uh, there are no instances of uh, Russians being targeted there, who, of course, uh, there is still a small presence there. And uh, also they've discussed uh, the upcoming Syria Peace Congress that's going to be taking place in Sochi uh, next week. So they have discussed the possibilities. Of course, there have been uh, certain issues that are that need ironing out. And uh, Turkey has been saying it's important that uh, Russia fully understands its position. And officials here in Ankara are saying that uh, Russia seems to be more understanding of the Turkish concerns. And it seems that uh, Russia is reviewing some of its policies. 
Hassan Abdullah in Ankara, thank you very much. Well, let's talk to Courtney Keeley on the ground for us in Hatay. Courtney, um, first of all, talk us through the gains made thus far and what the army chief has been saying. Well, the army chief was going to border towns yesterday, and as he was going through those border towns to show support for troops with the head of the Turkish land forces, a rocket landed quite near him. It didn't explode. It landed on a building. It was right near the mosque that was hit on Wednesday, and that attack on Wednesday killed a 65-year-old Turkish tailor and a 22-year-old Syrian refugee. It underscores the issue that there are cross-border attacks landing on the Turkish side of the border from the YPG inside Syria. As he was visiting, that also happened. And then meanwhile, in another town of Rahanli, nearly around the same time, another rocket hit and a small child was lightly injured. Uh, another attack on a civilian area. Testimony, the Turkish government will say, to its stance on weapons being supplied to the YPG by the U.S. being used against Turkey. Yes, and as, you, you, as Turkey has said, that there was a phone call between President Erdogan's uh, chief spokesman, Ibrahim Kalin, and the national security advisor to the U.S., H.R. McMaster. Now, Turkey says that the U.S. said they will stop arming the YPG in that phone call. But uh, Foreign Minister Çavuşoğlu made an interesting point. He said the White House says something, the Pentagon says something else. And in that thought right before me, you heard a U.S. spokesman for the military, for the Pentagon, saying that we've had these troops on the ground for the last year, we're going to keep them there. But what he didn't say specifically is those troops, some of the U.S. troops that were put in place in Manbij, were put in place to keep Turkish-backed forces from the U.S.-backed YPG. So we're hearing something from the, uh, different from the Pentagon. We're also hearing conflicting statements when after Turkish, the Turkish president spoke to the U.S. president. So it's unclear what could happen next, but it is clear that Turkey uh, is saying that they're on the way to Manbij after this Afrin operation, Jamie. The spokesman for uh, the U.S.-led coalition against Daesh says U.S. troops will not leave uh, Manbij until their mission is completed. Uh, and then we hear Turkey saying that they will extend the military operation, uh, a move that potentially could bring Turkey forces into confrontation with those of the U.S.? It could potentially, and those would be two NATO allies that could end up fighting each other, and that's why it's such a high-stakes game. Now, Russia did move out of Afrin and does control that airspace, but clearly they have had discussions with Turkey to step aside. The U.S. forces, in these conflicting messages, it's unclear whether they will step aside. And also remember the allies right now in this Turkish fight, thousands of free Syrian army that come from different factions, but they're presenting themselves as the Syrian National Army. Some of those fighters that I've spoken to, one of the commanders just recently traveled to Washington asking the U.S. president, but not being received by the U.S. president, to start the CIA program of arming them again. So you have allies with the Turkish military that have been trained at some points by the CIA program and by other programs that were in, uh, in place until last summer when the CIA program was stopped to those Syrian rebels. So you'd have Syrian rebels that still look to the U.S. sometimes for, the, for a future alliance fighting U.S.-backed YPG. It gets very complex, and it's really indicative of the complexities of this whole conflict that just continues and continues on. Courtney Keeley uh, in Hatay, thank you very much. Well, while Turkish forces have crossed into northern Syria, the YPG has also fired several rockets back across the border. Nafisa Latic went to speak to the people who live in Rehani, who say they're now living in fear. Five families live side by side on this street. One of them is Mahmoud Tunçs. He says his family will never be the same after last week. A rocket landed on the street, wounding six of his nephews and his mother. When the bomb exploded, my only fear was the children. I couldn't see ahead of us. I thought, should I take care of my mother? Should I go and look at my brother? Or should I check if another rocket is coming? The house wasn't destroyed, but this is what's left of it. And Mahmoud says he just doesn't have the money for repairs. He's a butcher by trade, but here in Rehanli, he says jobs are hard to find. 
this house was empty when the rocket struck because Türk Ankara had gone away to look for work. She was in Izmir with her four children when she got the news over the phone. When I heard the rocket attacks on my house, I fell to the ground. I sat and I couldn't stand. My children were also crying. We have only this house, nothing more. But thank God we were not here. Now all we can do is wait while authorities assess the damage. Now all they can do is wait while authorities assess the damage. This is our country, this is our house. Where else can we go? I don't have my husband now. He died six years ago. I'm looking after my children. I go do house cleaning. I'm feeding my children. This is the house where the rocket fired from Afrin fell almost a week ago. People here are still shaken but have no plans to leave. They say they really don't have anywhere else to go and all they want is to continue with their normal lives. Nafis Salati to Ray Hanley on the Turkey-Syria border. Well, when Turkey started Operation Olive Branch last weekend, it notified the Syrian regime and summoned foreign ambassadors to explain its plans. TRT World's Andrew Hopkins has more on the diplomatic front. When Turkey's troops entered Afrin, it wasn't a surprise. Politicians had been talking about it for months. They regarded it as Turkey's right under international law to tackle the YPG on its border. We will handle Afrin. There's no stepping back from Afrin. We discussed these with our Russian friends, we have an agreement with them, and we also discussed it with other coalition forces and the United States. Article 51 of the UN Charter says, Nothing in the present Charter shall impair the inherent right of individual or collective self-defense if an armed attack occurs against a member of the United Nations. Until the Security Council has taken measures necessary to maintain international peace and security. Measures taken by members in the exercise of this right of self-defense shall be immediately reported to the Security Council. The Syrian Democratic Forces control much of northern Syria near Turkey's border. It's dominated by the YPG, the Syrian branch of the PKK terrorist group, an organization that operates in Turkey. That's why officials believe the operation is justified, but there have been calls for restraint. Uh, we're engaged with Turkey and we are engaged also with the leadership uh, of our coalition and are asking that for restraint, uh, please minimize the impact on civilian casualties of which we've already suffered uh, too many civilian casualties and see that what we can do to work together to address Turkey's legitimate security concerns. Turkey says it has a specific aim in mind to remove the YPG from the area and that civilian casualties will be kept to a minimum. It says the operation may take time, but it won't be deterred. Andrew Hopkins, TRT World. Well, let's talk to Muzaffa Şenol, the director of the Center for Modern Turkish Studies at Istanbul Şehir University. Um, welcome to the program. How do you see the U.S. is going to respond to Turkey's call to withdraw from Minbij? Actually, that the Mambic, this operation will be uh, one of the default lines between Turkey and the United States. Not only the United States, but also the Russia and the regime and all other actors in the, in the region. And in the, uh, Turkey is now is taking the more focusing on the, uh, the this strategic strategic gain rather than than uh, to make it the operational gain into a strategic gain. Uh, that's why that the forcing the United States strategically withdrawal from the uh, Mambic to get the, to create a, at least safer zone between Turkey and the, the other groups in the region. How much has been achieved since the beginning of Operation Olive Branch nine days ago? Actually, that is what Turkey is trying to to uh, uh, to. Uh, to secure to secure its borders, and then which was also accepted by the the, the international actors like NATO and the, the, the some uh, European countries also uh, so agreed on the what is trying to do in the region. 
is to protection of its civilians, its territorial integrity and the border security, which are more important. Turkey is now gaining on the ground, operational, operational ground. But the most important thing is that the, to, these operational success should be into to a strategic success. The withdrawal of the, the U.S. Army from the Memich, that's why it's the one of the, the core strategic uh, success, will be strategic success. And uh, with the, uh, it will be the, uh, it will be a kind of uh, open a way for Turkey to deploy this uh, it is, uh, let's say, power on the, the on the uh, uh, borders on its borders. Let's just look to, ahead to into the uh, future for a moment, and let me ask you: How likely is it that the FSA will be able to maintain control over the territories, the YPG and Afrin and I mean, Minbich, uh, after the end of Operation Olive Branch? Yeah, actually, the, after, during after the olive after the olive branch operations that with the Nair Turkey created a safe zone for the people who lives in uh, Operation uh, Euphrates Shields, then now this is also will create the almost the same uh, success. Hopefully, that will also will be created in those regions. If you look at the Jarablus today, that uh, Turkey's success will be more important to create an at least a functioning, the the functioning uh, some social security apparatus like schools or hospitals, Turkish military and the Turkish uh, Turkish others like the, the NGOs or the, the charity organizations deployed on the, re the, the the located in the region and they created for the uh, for the people who lives there they changed the the, the, the their. Uh, uh, people's life in Jarablus and the oper uh, operates, uh, operation, uh, operation of the Euphrates Shields uh, area, and that uh, people now will more secure, more safe, like him. for the African region also will Turkey will uh, do it, but I'm not sure that about the sustainability of the, to this success, because only the Europe, this is not only the U.S. Of, uh, 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 against the Turkish operations, uh, we sh should also take care of the, the regime, and also regime supported. Uh, regime was supported by Russia and the, the Iran, and uh, Turkey will convince the together with Russia and United States all together to convince to create a safe area for its borders. It seems difficult, but it is not impossible. To Shepard, safe thank you very zone. much indeed for joining okay. us on uh, TRT. Let's talk now to uh, the world's Turkey analyst, Yusuf Erim. We have two diametrically opposing views here, don't we, on what happens next in this operation. Turkey's stated plan on its advance into Manbij, and the U.S. saying, as we heard earlier, they won't leave the area until their operation is completed. Well, we saw Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlüt Çavuşoğlu request that U.S. troops back away from Manbij, which is a very reasonable request as President Erdogan has signaled that the operation is going to move forward into the Manbij region. Now, this is a very important region that has strategically been a staging point for many YPG attacks, and its logistic uh, has incredible logistic importance. And from the from the you. Uh, Army spokesman in the area, Colonel Dillon, we see that the U.S. has refused to move out, that they're going to while the operation is going to go down now. We see this divide deeper and deeper. It's turned into a fissure, actually, between the U.S. and Turkey. And one could say that maybe the U.S. doesn't under, fully understand who the YPG is, but we've seen many statements come out of Washington from former Secretary of Defense Ash Carter, from Senator Lindsey Graham, from Raymond Thomas at U.S. Special Command, that Washington fully understands that who the YPG is. It's not the PKK. And despite um, uh, c repeated statements from the U.S. saying that we recognize Turkey's legitimate security concerns, their actions are not corresponding with these statements. The U.S. will say it's entirely focused on defeating Daesh, a strategy that perhaps you might understand. Defeating Daesh is very, very important, and the U.S. is very focused on Fortunately, their focus on just defeating Daesh has 
taken the concentration away from the bigger picture, which is creating a new Syria. There's a lot of YPG propaganda and a lot of misinformation that paints the YPG in a picture like it's some mystical force that's the only force that can defeat Daesh. And this is completely untrue. The Turkish military has stated that Operation Olive Branch is not just an operation aimed at, directed towards the YPG, but it's also an operation to clear the Afrin region and other regions from terrorism. And the FSA, the Free Syrian Army, has been a very successful unit against Daesh. They've been fighting against Daesh since 2014, a year before the U.S. coalition, two years before Russian intervention. They've been successful at beating them in Idlib. They've been successful at beating them in Azaz. The Azaz battle against Daesh was actually a very hard-fought battle because while the battle was going on, the YPG actually opened a second front against them, and they had to fight the and Daesh simultaneously. A quick thought on the Sochi peace talks, which are to get underway tomorrow. What prospects? Well, the Sochi peace talks, or the Syrian National Dialogue by its other name, is a round of peace talks that's aimed at creating a new constitution for a new Syria. Now, we have the Turkish side guaranteeing the opposition, which has just announced that they're backing out of this round of talks. And we have the Russians and the Iranians guaranteeing the regime. Now, Turkey is very critical to this process because it's representing the opposition. Even though the opposition will not be there, their interests will be represented with the Turkish diplomats who are going to be attending. And we're going to have to see how effective these first round of talks for the Syrian National Dialogue are going to be. Yusuf Erim, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I think we can now cross over to uh, the TRT correspondent Ali Mustafa, who's on the Turkey-Syria border. Um, what can you tell us? What's going on there? Well, if you can make out, if the viewers can make out the noise behind me, a lot of bombardment, artillery shelling, and aerial attacks on an area very close to Kilis. Now, this is, uh, these are the Busraya uh, village and the mountain behind me. If I can just move out of the frame for our viewers, you see that the smoke coming from behind the mountain, uh, YPG positions, and that mountain range uh, itself is the highest position that the YPG terror group controls overlooking Azaz, which is on one side of this frame. And over the past couple of hours, we've seen aerial attacks, Turkish fighter jets. We've seen artillery positions. In fact, if we continue this long enough, you might see, you might hear a boom sounds emanating from uh, nearby where we are from the Turkish side going on to YPG positions that way. And the fight is very, very near. Uh, just yesterday we saw on uh, Saturday uh, YPG rockets fired from Afrin from areas there hitting Killers, the town center uh, behind him. So it's, uh, it's a 15 kilometer uh, stretch of land where the YPG is firing rockets from its positions and they are ending up. Uh, these are unsophisticated mortar rockets that are fired uh, over distances of 10, 15, up to 20 kilometers. And then the Turkish forces retaliate. Uh, Turkish officials and military sources are telling us that the village behind me where being targeted should be taken today. First, they want to attack it with artillery. Then they want to surround it with FSA forces backed by Turkish, uh, Turkish military. So it's quite a complicated situation. And as far as the people on the ground, it's quite tense as well. And that's the military picture. Can you tell us anything of the story of civilians in the area? Well, it's very difficult, because uh, keep in mind that uh, while uh, this, the, this attack continues, civilians are trying to make their way and escape all over the place. Uh, that was a, a rocket fired, actually, from uh, Turkish positions into the area that, we're, that we're, we were pointing out. So <laughs> civilians, at least on the Turkish side, are very... Uh, it, it's an exciting situation, but it's also a dangerous situation because they don't know when the next rocket will, will come and land. And this is one of the reasons why Turkey says it's so important to clear that safe zone inside Afrin so rocket attacks can't come here, that uh, why can't necessarily control these civilian areas. But yes, there is a c civilian population that is stranded on the other side, which um, humanitarian uh, assistance is trying to reach with Kizilay, the Turkish Red Crescent. Our father is also trying to make its way. 
So it's a difficult situation, definitely. And civilians, as far as Turkey is concerned, they're trying to provide as much assistance to them as possible. Ali Mustafa on the Turkey-Syria border, thank you very much. We'll be back to you during the course of the day for uh, more from you. Thank you very much indeed. Stay with us here on TRT World. We'll have more on Operation Olive Branch and, of course, all the news making the headlines around the world. Thank you for watching.